Even during like Trump's administration, inflation was actually quite low. So that's not no, it was low then, but true. it's not low right now. Yes, but why was it low then? Would you say? Well, because we had economic growth, and we didn't, we weren't borrowing two to three trillion dollars a year. We actually, we actually were. We were borrowing quite a bit of money. We were borrowing about a trillion dollars a year. Still not, quite a bit. So we're borrowing about triple that right now. Yes. Do you agree? Um. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. I, mean, I think so, that's how the math works so out. So triple in the larger in the law of big numbers is a big deal. So mm-hmm. borrowing eight hundred billion, not excusable. Borrowing two point five trillion morally reprehensible morally why exactly morally is there well, a distinction between one and three trillion very because, arbitrary because yes. everyone here is going to have to pay off that debt and that dollar that you think is going to have value is decreasing by the debt whether you're economic whether you're pro-choice or democrat but inflation and this, is something that's going to occur no matter what can, sorry can i sorry. finish okay i apologize uh, it's okay um inflation is not a guaranteed human norm that's not true but i'll get to that in a second every single person here it will be harder than ever for you to own a home so inflation is immoral because you're going to enter into a housing market where everything costs three times as much in the housing market than it did a decade ago. You will not be able to afford a down payment, mm-hmm. let alone even be able to build the capital necessary True. for other goods and services that True. you might want to build wealth. And you know who does benefit is your parents' generation and baby boomers, True. no offense, True. that do own their assets and you won't. And so secondly, inflation is a choice. It's not built into the human experience. Uh, the human experience, sure. But the economic system, especially a capitalist economic system, it definitely is. How, well, would, you, how would you try how you to build achieve a central 0% bank. Inflation? Yeah, 0% inflation? 0% yeah. inflation? Well, I wouldn't want 0% inflation. So then it is built in. It, well, inflation... And it is a necessary evil. No, I, I said I wouldn't want it. Okay. okay. Moderate inflation is good for money velocity and for growth. Yes. But you need to manage that versus the growth rate, right? amazing viewers welcome back to my youtube channel so if you are new here please subscribe to my youtube channel so today i'm with amazing guest name Professor peter oh thank you for coming thank you. thank you so today we are reacting to anti-capitalists suggest inflation is not real yeah so guys please stay tuned let's enjoy this wonderful video together um, how do you feel about like the current state of the economy and this whole theory of like immaculate disinflation? If you're familiar with the term, say the sec- say that again. Immaculate disinflation. Well, we're not living through that. Um, okay. But yeah. Yes. Um, and where's your proof that we aren't exactly? Are you taught disinflation? Yes. That we actually don't are see- we're not seeing a surge in prices. No, disinflation means the inflation rate is decreasing over time. Well, so there is some evidence to show that. For example, televisions, iPhones, specific products. That's not an illustration of all inflation. Though. No, I was going to prove your. I was going to agree with you that. Okay. But if you just go to a grocery store, eggs are far more expensive than they were two years ago. You don't have to overthink it. I mean, the college degree here at this university. What is it per year, guys? For, 30, how much? Thir- That's They've been ten in state, thirty thousand out of state. Yeah, I, 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 ten years ago, I bet it was eighteen thousand out of state, right? So Yes, but they've been trying to raise the Cal State uh, tuition for quite some time, even before inflation spiked to its current levels, or previous levels about a year ago. They've just been delaying it for quite some time. So yeah, it's not I mean, exactly... We're, we're living through a decades-long inflation surge. And it, it the best evidence, you can see it either in the artificial boosting of profit-earning but ratios. Even, Go ahead. Even during like Trump's administration, inflation was actually quite low. So that's not no, it was low then, but true. it's not low right now. Yes, but why was it low then? Would you say? Well, because we had economic growth, and we didn't, we weren't borrowing two to three trillion dollars a year. We actually, we actually were. We were borrowing quite a bit of money. We were borrowing about a trillion dollars a year, Still not quite a bit. So we're borrowing about triple that right now. Yes. Do you agree? Um. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got I it. mean, I think so, that's how the math works so out. So triple in the larger in the law of big numbers is a big deal. So mm-hmm. borrowing eight hundred billion, not excusable. Borrowing two point five trillion morally reprehensible morally why exactly morally is there well, a distinction between one and three trillion very cause, arbitrary because yes. everyone here is going to have to pay off that debt and that dollar that you think is going to have value is decreasing by the debt whether you're economic whether you're pro-choice or democrat but inflation this, is something that's going to occur no matter what can, sorry can i sorry. finish okay i apologize uh, it's okay um inflation is not a guaranteed human norm that's not true but i'll get to that in a second every single person here it will be harder than ever for you to own a home so inflation is immoral because you're going to enter into a housing market where everything costs three times as much in the housing market than it did a decade ago. You will not be able to afford a down payment, mm-hmm. let alone even be able to build the capital necessary True. for other goods and services that True. you might want to build wealth. And you know who does benefit is your parents' generation and baby boomers, True. no offense, True. that do own their assets and you won't. And so secondly, inflation is a choice. It's not built into the human experience. Uh, the human experience, sure. But the economic system, especially a capitalist economic system, it definitely is. How well, would you, it how would you try how you to build achieve 0% yeah, inflation? 0% inflation? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't want 0% inflation. So then it is built in. 
It, well, inflation. And it is necessary evil. No, I, I said I wouldn't want it. Okay. okay. Moderate inflation is good for money velocity and for growth. Yes. But you need to manage that versus the growth rate, right? So yes. this goes back to Milton Friedman's idea of the Chicago <laughs> mon monetarism. You can laugh all you want. <laughs> Friedman? Yeah, all right. Okay. Uh, well, what's so funny about Milton Friedman? The fact he's the greatest economist of the 20th century? or Qualify. That's a, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't say he's exactly that. So you're more like a John, I respect Maynard, your John Maynard Keynes guy? So yeah. Not necessarily, okay, no, no. I just take a more broad approach than okay, uh, specifically so Milton So we don't Friedman. need to have a central bank. We do have a central bank. Okay, okay, bold bold claim. I'll follow you, though. I'll you follow you. You don't need to have a central bank. I used to be very against the Federal Reserve as well. Okay, I'm just saying you don't need to have one, but okay. we choose to have one. The central bank has been overly politicized mm. to try to stop, let's just say, natural economic cycles from occurring. Both administrations, Bush, Obama, Trump, Biden have okay. leaned on the central bank to use cheap money as a way yeah. to try to keep okay. the good times flowing and the good times going. Yeah, yeah. Okay, That's so, definitely for sure. So we, we don't agree. Well, we don't disagree. Um, yeah, but here's the other thing I would say. We can't hear you. I gotta say, your protesters are kind of weak here, guys. Aren't I expected they? more Aren't out they? of them, right? They didn't seem to have the energy to get. I know. The I front. thought they'd have more. You know. Yeah, I like it. Please keep going. Yeah. I will say though, um, going back to the like mortgage rates as you were saying i would say that probably has a lot more to do with private equity buying up homes than the inflation rate uh, well hold on there's two parts to that i'm not talking okay. just about mortgage interest rates are up i'm talking about just the asset price itself that too i would say it's a lot more related to private equity that, buying yeah, up but, homes but why, so why is private equity doing that because they have so much cheap money that we've put into the system they don't have to do with it mm. Now, if I think we could agree, actually, mm -hmm. there should be laws against BlackRock coming in and buying single-family oh, yeah. homes and oh, renting yeah. them back. You should not be a society of renters. It's bad for society. Yes, yes. So we can agree on that. I oh, say yes, that as a conservative. Sure. It's bad for the, the human experience Good. and for yeah. you know, generational flourishing. Mm -hmm. But when you, when you open up the guzzle of cheap money, which we have done, especially yes. post-COVID, so, mm -hmm. there's a price to that. And the price is that your oh, currency yeah. gets weaker. Okay. And we're seeing that right now. Yes. Um, so you, would you say that it was actually necessary to, in order to get out of the um, huge recession we experienced during the pandemic to... No, I, I think we should have just opened up the economy. We never should have locked down the country. Okay. So we never should have borrowed the $6 trillion. We never should have done the stimulus stuff. It so, hurt every single one of you. It increased suicide rates, depression, anxiety, fiscal problems, economic problems, political problems. I could definitely agree with that to some extent. But would you say even in, say, 2009... Uh, lowering the interest rates to zero in that sense was that well, we didn't necessary? go to zero we didn't uh, we went down Low, believe it or okay. not we went to like five percent COVID we went to like near zero yes. but no I, I have a contrarian view on 2008 I think we should have let the banks fail Ooh, okay. and, I, and I think we should have I think we actually should have allowed the market to solve it not to okay. have socialism for the rich and you know what bru yes. brutal capitalism for the working class. I totally agree with that okay so I, totally agree with I that. think that Wells Fargo Goldman I think that Lehman and the big banks that failed should have had to actually Okay. Cl climb themselves out, and, or you you just you destroyed a moral hazard. Yeah. is what you did, and zero executives went mm. to prison. I agree okay. with Elizabeth yeah. Warren on this. None of these robber mm. barons that did what they did in 08 served mm. federal prison time. Mm. Meanwhile, and I will use a political statement to contrast it. Grandmas that went to the Capitol on January 6th and took selfie videos are in federal prison. You mm. ask me who's a bigger threat to democracy? Wall Street executives <laughs> that bankrupted our economy yeah. in 2008 oh, are a course. bigger threat to oh, our country course. than people now, that walked into the Capitol building and took a selfie. Now, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. I, I don't know if my memory served me correctly, but who was... Uh, did Steve Mnuchin serve under the Trump administration? Yeah, he was from Go Government Sachs. Yeah. Did, he, did he serve under the Trump administration? Uh, that, that's right, yeah. So why would Trump invite someone like that who should probably be in federal prison into well, his yeah. administration? I, I, I have a lot of personnel uh, disagreements. I love Trump, but I think you love Trump. Love Trump. Why would you love? Why would? So do we love Trump, everybody? So to ask to ask a broader question, yes. why would you love any politician? Um, they, well, have a, they have a job to do. Why be emotionally so attached? I have, in that sense? To, and I don't say this like lightly. I, I do have a friendship with them. I've gotten known over a couple okay, of years. Okay. So, and disclosing I also, bias. Disclosing you know, bias. One hundred percent okay. biased. And Good. so I also think he's one, he, whether you hate him or love him, he's a once in one hundred year. But why person. would you hate him or love him? He just has a job to do. Right? Well, I also love what he did as country. Okay. As, as president for the okay. country. So. Would but, you say though that yeah. you're probably more of a fiscal conservative? 
Me? Yeah. Yeah, and I probably his borrowing was one one of the two. So three things, if you want to just be full disclosure, yeah. that I think President Trump could have done better, and I think he will do better. Fiscal deficit spending, okay? Why do you think he will do better? Let me get to all three, okay? Okay. Uh, COVID and certain personnel choices, okay? Okay. Those are the three things. And, okay. my, and I could list 100 accomplishments. Those are three things I think that the first administration, you know, that wasn't their best. Yeah. Why it could have been better? I think that he's... He's um, he's got the world against him, and he's uh, he's when if he becomes president again, which the 50-50 shot he will, uh, he he's gonna set the world on fire. I would say he's a little bit too egotistical and emotional to really counter the world being against him. He seems to react a little too emotionally to you, these I mean, kinds of things. I don't want to get too deep into it, but you're not gonna you're not gonna convince me of on uh, negative Trump stuff. So okay, okay, interesting. So your mind isn't necessarily that open. Isn't this changed my mind? You could try. Okay. I mean, you're not going to... But didn't you just say kind of up front that... Uh, you're not I mean, really I'm, I'm open-minded to hear. I'm just saying you're not going to change my mind on this okay. stuff. Okay, okay. So then what is it that's leading you to think that Trump is going to have better decision-making in this next term, specifically when it comes to borrowing? Um, Because he is going to... Con- assess- I mean, I, I just... I don't know, and honestly. Okay. I just... There's okay. there's little evidence except the fact that it's we're... little intuition. We're going to have a debt crisis, the likes of which the country's never seen, and he's going to have to address it. We need to have severe cuts in the federal budget. We need okay. To so that. would you say that the downgrading of America's credit rating is more related to our national debt or the inability to um, handle it in a mature way? Um, more, both, but more just the debt itself. Is, okay. I mean, we now, we now owe more than we're worth as a country. So I want to yeah. get to other qu- questions because you've had okay. some time. But final Perfect. question, I want to be respectful. But So I guess... How would, if you think that that's an issue, that we have more debt than, say, our current income? Well, we do. Well, yeah, but if you uh, would just say... The, the value of the country. Of course, yeah. of course. Of course, we control um, our own currency, and our currency is the number one reserve. Yeah, are you a modern monetary reserve. guy? So, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah so. It's, it's the number one reserve, so, you know, that well, gives us a lot of wiggle so room. it's decreasing. It used to be 75% of the world's reserve currency status 20 years ago. Now it's 55%. I would say... Do you know lot. about BRICS? You know BRICS, right? <laughs> Bricks, yeah, I do. Bricks I do. is creating an alternative. I pe- think they're dollar. paper tiger. Okay. Uh, I hope you're. I actually hope you're right. I don't. I don't believe I that India, right. China, South Africa, and Russia could ever work together to create their own. I hope unified you're right. currency. I, don't, I just hope we're not too prideful. Definitely a paper tiger. Thank you. Wow. Whoa. Okay. <sighs> God, you we were just watching. Like I was, I was speechless. I was just looking at. I said, God, I would, I'm, I'm really, really learning a lot. On this video, I learned a lot. Like yeah, it's very educative, yes, and um, I would particularly want to say this is one of the reasons why we're having issue even as a country, in Nigeria. You know, just like um, what's his name again? Charlie said. Okay. He said um, um, every country who actually borrows, you know, becomes weaker you know, economically. And so you cannot really fight against inflation when things begin to inflate. Whether you like it or not, just like he said, dollar was in reserve, 75%, and now dollar is 55% in reserve, foreign reserve. You know, and this is USD that is shared within so many countries. So many countries use this USD, even the Australian, for example, the government, they use USD too. That's why they have their own currency, but USD. And most countries thrive with... Nigeria to yeah, we use, we use it, yeah. USD for, for transactions more. So it becomes an issue when countries keep on borrowing and borrowing and borrowing. You cannot really build anything. Also, if you streamline it down to smaller brands, any brand who keeps on borrowing, you know, would not gain strength. And inflation can actually sweep them off. So you find out that you have a lot of citizens within a particular country who are poor or could not survive. And it becomes a challenge. Just like there was one last thing I want to pick out from when he said on the long term run, we'll find out that it's just our parents that will really benefit from the country. Most of them, not us, <laughs> but most of them will um, have challenges trying to benefit from the country. Why? Because the country has been birthed on debts yeah. and it's a major challenge. Yeah, that's true. So guys, please comment below on your view on this video. Comment below. Like this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Enke Fashion Store. Fashion Fashion makes makes sense. sense.